Well, good morning. Uh, grace and peace to you from God, our uh, Creator, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, welcome to our worship uh, this morning on um, August 23rd. I hope you uh, had a chance to uh, open a you know, different device, the order of worship, or uh, maybe you were able to print that and also the songs, and you are ready for worship. I hope that's the case. I uh, just want to um, go over announcements. Uh, one is that um, we continue to send out information uh, about um, activities, about how St. Peter is functioning, and, um, through our newsletter and please uh, take the time to read that uh, you should receive that through your email also uh, through the post uh, office we mail that out and uh, you will find um, just information about an updates and currently uh, we are um, going to be asking um, how many people will be interested in an outside worship we are looking at uh, hosting a couple uh, outside in-person worship so please uh, this week take the time to um, uh, answer those survey questions so that and let us know uh, so that way we can make plans uh, for the next uh, few weeks um, we continue uh, to pray for all those who are uh, facing illness uh, with uh, coronavirus but just variety of, of illness and also uh, all those who are um, first responders to uh, fires that um, we've had uh, lately in here in California. So keep uh, all those uh, in your in your prayers as well. Let us uh, gather uh, in Him this morning, and our gathering Him is O God of mercy, God of light. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin and let us take a few seconds for self-reflection. Together, let us read this uh, confession. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sing in thought, war, and deed. 
By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us. So that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We continue with our dialogue of this morning, and it comes from Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will go down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I call you, answer me. You increase your strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me, O Lord. Your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. I will invite you to pray with me the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue with our readings. Uh, our first reading uh, comes from Isaiah chapter 51, verses 1 to 6. And if you have your Bible with you, I will invite you to follow along. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden. Her desert like the garden of the Lord, joy and gladness will be found in her. Thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Join me in the Gospel Acclamation this morning.
The Holy Gospel comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 16th chapter. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah, the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I had a lot of questions for Jesus after I read this portion of our gospel. Like, why would you not want people to know that you are the Messiah? Jesus never acknowledged that this during his crucifixion, but here he does so clearly, although he tells his disciples not to tell anyone. First, we have to understand that the concept of Messiah had a political and violent connotation. People thought that the Messiah would be a heroic human figure, anointed by God, who would come and overthrow the political order at the time in support of the Jews. Rome was an empire who held power over the land. And the Jewish community hoped that their lives of freedom would be achieved once the Messiah came to liberate them from this dominant power that ruled the earth at that time. And it's not that Jesus did not care about this, but he came to challenge this in a very different way. He had a different approach. He, of course, never formed a political campaign. He never spoke of foreigners in an inhuman way. He came to liberate all people from the inside out, from their hearts to their actions. Because he spoke to people's hearts and souls to set them free, free from themselves, free from sin. In our Lutheran tradition, we talked about sin as this inward inclination to oneself. It is that self-inclination to satisfy oneself by acquiring in possessions and people and things and land for one's own benefit without paying attention to others like our neighbors, the foreigner, the refugee. Jesus came to face the oppressor in a very different way. He was indeed the Messiah, the anointed one of God, but he came to reveal a God of justice and mercy and peace to all people. By now, these disciples, his disciples already had spent enough time with Jesus to be able to answer this basic question of his identity. But who do you say that I am? He asked his disciples. A question that sounds so simple, but yet could be really hard to answer. Especially if his disciples have seen the variety of aspects or many aspects of Jesus' persona. Most people were associated associating Jesus' persona with prophets, and that is why that is because he um, he did uh, he he had a prophetic voice. 
I don't think that they were wrong in associating him with other prophets because he also came to share God's message to God's people as past prophets did. And I think that the context has a lot to do with how we may answer that question of identity. For example, if you were to ask someone like Rod or Lexi, who do you think Pastor Misael is? They, they might say he's a young and handsome pastor with a great smile, perhaps. If you someone, if you ask my siblings, who do you think, who do you say Pastor Misael is? They might have a different answer. They may say he's a brother who gets on my nerves most of the time. But Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? Like I said, they by now have experienced him as a healer. They have experienced him as, as a miracle worker, as a rescuer. Peter, Peter had experienced Jesus as the one who saved him from sinking down into the water. So out of all the possibilities, he asked him, knowing the many answers and people's experiences of him. But Peter's answer become this powerful confession, which is our confession even today. He, he answers with, you are the son of the living God. And like I mentioned, context, context is everything. The text tells us about the context in which this took place in the Gospel of Matthew. The text tells us that they were already in this uh, Roman district of Caesarea Philippi. And what I learned about this city, this Roman city, is that there was a famous cave where there was a spring, a water spring, and a grotto, grotto with Greek statues of Greek gods. Audrey West, a professor of New Testament from the Moravian Theological Seminary in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, writes that in Caesarea Philippi, a nearby cave housed a great spring that fed one of the sources of the Jordan River. And this cave and spring had long served as a sanctuary dedicated to the Greek god Pan. And Greek inscription and niches carved into the rock, still visible today, suggest dedications to other pagan gods as well. A couple of decades before Jesus' birth, Herod the Great had built a temple near the spring in honor of Caesar Augustus. And by the time Jesus and his disciples visited the region, Caesarea Philippi had been given over the auspices of Herod's son, Philip, who established the city as the administrative center of his government. And by the time the Gospel of Matthew was written, people were likely aware that the Roman commander, commander who led the destruction of Jerusalem in 70, had returned with his troops to, to Caesarea Philippi in celebration of their victory. But here, so this question is a key question because it has to do with trust and loyalty. Who do you say that I am? And Peter, of course, speaks words that reveal who ultimately Jesus is, not only for him, but for us today. He is the son of the living God, and he confesses these next to these other Greek gods and images who also call God's people for their loyalties and trusts. But Peter points to Jesus as the one anointed by God who is alive, who is in human form living with them in the world rather than living in ancient caves place on cave rocks. Jesus tells after Peter's confession that in that confession in him he will build his church. Jesus' temple 
would not be like the one in Philippi, without movement, without effect, aesthetic, but rather living stones in which God's law will be inscribed and scripted into their hearts. The temple will be Peter, Jesus' own disciples, us. This temple will carry the presence of the living God into the world, a body in the world by whom the work of Jesus will continue. The work of proclaiming and spreading the kingdom of God, one to which all who confess Jesus as the Son of the living God have access to. We notice after this confession that Jesus affirmed that confession and tells Peter he offered the keys of the kingdom. Now a key is significant and I looked and I did some research on these ancient keys. 4,000 years ago people wanted the ability to safeguard their possessions and store them in places where nobody else can get access to them. And that's why I get also a locker key. The locks and keys offer a small manner of protection against thief or intrusion. First models of wooden keys and locks originate from ancient Egypt. Roman age introduced brought many improvements upon original Egyptian designs, but the expensive nature of the locks, their inability to sustain large external forces and easy picking made them to be a symbol of wealth and influence and nobility. And here's the part that I really want to emphasize. A small keys made from metals, iron, bronze, silver, gold, were often viewed as one of the most effective ways of publicly showing your wealth. And only very rich people could afford to have a personal safes or doors with locking mechanisms. Of course, the treasure that we have inherited a God's people in this kingdom is beyond wealth. We have inherited this kingdom, a kingdom that all people are invited, poor and rich, to come and experience this living God in Christ Jesus. A living God who healed the daughter of a foreigner, who fed the crowd out of the resources brought to him, who journeyed with people oppressed by, a, by an earthly empire power. A God who walks daily with humans, with us, and understands our human life with all its unfairness, with all its brokenness, with all its injustices and imperfections. God from above came to be with us in Christ Jesus. So dear people of God, this is what holds us together as a church Christ. Because he is the cornerstone, cornerstone of our church. We indeed are Christ's temple, Christ's church. We are living rocks, living stones. Yes, imperfect sinners, yet on whom God in Christ decided to build his church in the world. So thanks be to God for God entrusting to us these keys to this wonderful kingdom. So let us continue to proclaim and invite others to this kingdom. A place of love, a place of peace, a place of healing. A place of justice and mercy where there is no domination but a space for all. Amen. Let us respond in song. Our song, our word in song, uh, is we are all one in Christ. Please join us.
Well, together as church, as God's people, united in Christ, let us confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed, a creed, a confession of faith that has been served the church for many years. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now continue with our offering, and I will um, invite you to continue to um, give uh, using our online resources in our website. There is a way for you to give your offering, and also if you prefer um, sending uh, in the mail your offering, please continue to do so. Thank you. And um, for those who also it's hard to, to give, let us uh, offer this song as our own offering this morning. Trusting that God hears all our prayers. So let us pray. Confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church and the world and all who are in need. Lord, our rock, you are our foundation in Jesus Christ, your Son, whom we confess as the living God. Prepare the church for its mission in bearing witness to Christ, both here at home and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call forth praises from the far reaches of the universe to the smallest of creatures. Join our songs to theirs that our spirit of praise and thanksgiving will arouse us to cherish this wondrous home you give us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. Direct the leaders of the countries, legislators and magistrates, mayors and councils to walk in your ways. Help leaders regard those in need with mercy and fulfill your loving purposes in the governance of peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Though we walk in the midst of trouble, we preserve, you preserve us, deliver us, and fulfill your purpose for us according to your steadfast love. Grant healing and wholeness to those who are in trouble, who are facing adversity, who are sick, all those who are in need of your care. Lord, in your mercy. 
you call us into this community, St. Peter Lutheran Church, in which the many, we are many, we are one in Christ. May we recognize in ourselves and in one another the unique gift you have given us for the building up of the church, for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For what else we pray for this morning, and I will invite you to lift your own prayers from where you are. We pray this morning especially for those uh, students and teachers who already started school, most of them online, or for those who will start tomorrow, um, a cycle, um, a school year. Be with them, um, grant uh, grace to all teachers and students that in the midst of these um, challenges um, that they may be able to still be together, to learn together and um, give them uh, motivation to be able to take classes and be uh, the home of each uh, parent and teacher. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Again, we pray for those who are fighting fires or who recently uh, went to put out a fire um, in the wilderness. Protect uh, all those communities who surround uh, wildlife, preserve uh, wildlife also, animals, the environment, um, and protect all those first responders as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the everlasting rock from which we were hewn, and you restore your people to joy and gladness. In blessed memory and hope, we thank you for the lives of our beloved dead. Bring us with them to our heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let me offer this blessing to you, and may this blessing carry uh, you this week. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Now go in peace. The Christ is with us. Our sending Him is built on a rock. 